Logical way to start this video, let's talk about the date. It's Sunday the 10th of November. I tell you what, that is a stunner. That is a mature female redback spider. It must have wandered here because there was no redback spiders here back in April. That is amazing. Ah, oh, beautiful day, not too hot, nice and sunny. It's the last part of spring for me. And I had a bit of an experiment down this end of the yard and I think that experiment has utterly failed. I'm going to need this gear in this video and most certainly a pair of gloves. These tubs that mummy uses for her garden bed here uh, also presents for redback spider the perfect home. And last April, do you remember what I did here? I released some what I call cement spiders, grey house spiders, grey widows to this area here. They were from underneath my car, wonderful little things. And I was hoping by releasing those spiders here, it would stop redback spiders from setting up. But I've got a hunch uh, that has not worked at all. And in this video, we'll investigate to see what's happened six months down the track. I've also set up some custom spider lures here, but they've only been here a couple of months. It might be nice to take a peek at my spider season chart here, so this video is educational enough for YouTube. In the spidery scheme of things, we're in that first week in November there. Normally I use a burning process to interrupt the redback spider's breeding cycle. It's a very effective and environmentally friendly way to control these nasty pests. Now this year we've had a very very early start to the fire season, there's been a lot of big fires. Today is not a total fire ban where I live, but I think it's best if I keep my cool and we will deal with the spiders that we're going to find in a different way. That burn I normally do around Halloween time. I brought it forward last year. Well, I couldn't do it this year. Before I get the gloves on, let's take a look at what spiderific action is going on up between those tubs. Okay, this is between the first gap. You know what, that's looking pretty good. I'm not seeing any spider web, and I'm not seeing a spidey. Oh my crikeys, this is up between the second gap. It's looking like a spiderific tragedy. I dare say that's red back spider web. I can see a snail, I think. Oh, it's spiderific. Oh my crikey, I think there's an egg sack there as well. The next one along, it's actually looking pretty clean. No spider web means no spidey. The next one between two green tubs, it's actually looking pretty good. Maybe a little bit of spidey web, but um, I think worth. Okay, the last gap here, it's not looking very good at all. I can see spider web, so that means there's a spider there, and I dare say, I believe it's a red back, and maybe it's feeding there. Or maybe that's an egg sack. I'm going to have to have a closer look to work out exactly what's going on there. So that's what happens when I miss out on two burns in this area. The redback spiders come back. I've got two breeding females in amongst the tubs there. Hey, let's take a look at these little spider lures. This one first. First thing I notice is look how rusted they've got in a very short time. They're held on by magnets. It's really just a way so I can inspect what's going on inside. Whoa. The first thing I'll note, there's some very, very small spider web there. And up inside there is actually a spiderling there. You know what, that could be a grey house spider spiderling. Maybe the video audience can see it better than me. I'm looking through the tiny little viewfinder in the back of the camera. I'll put this back up here. It'll magnetise back on. And I was just going to move this to the end. Uh, you'll see why soon. We'll take a look at this one next. This one here is a real cheap one. It's uh, from Kmart in Australia. It's $7 for this. It's an inverted like pot. I'll show you what it looks like when I've taken a look for a spider. Very simple. I don't have to do any modifications to this. And I can see a little bit of spider web there. And actually I can see a spider and I believe it's a juvenile redback. And if I turn this around very carefully, we'll take a nice close look. Okay, with my very sloppy trained spider eyes, that is a juvenile redback spider. That's a very, very bad sign in one way, but it's also a good sign in another. To give you a scale of how small that spiderling is, there's my finger in next to it. Tiny little thing, tiny. Now, why I'm happy about this, this hasn't been here that long. It's already attracted a redback spiderling. Now, the way these normally work, I think this is the best little spider catcher you can buy, but you don't have to do anything. Normally, it goes like that. It's a pot plant. Okay, that you buy, they're $7, they're nice and cheap, there's plentiful of them in Kmart Australia. And when I saw this, I just thought, wow, it is the perfect spider snare, as I'll call it, lure, because the spiders will love to live in something like that. And I've just proven that's the case. 
like the other spider catcher, just for the moment I'm just going to put it over here, out of the way. Okay, time to get serious. Time to split these tubs apart, try and grab a couple of redback spiders. Oh, can you believe that? Mummy's gloves again. I can't do a burn today, but I'll put those in quarantine somewhere. I'm going to have to move these uh, logs out of here. There's probably going to be something underneath this running for its life. Whoa! Oh, there's a mole cricket. There it goes. Hope you saw that. And there's an ant nest. Oh, and something else running for its life there on the underneath that timber. And those mole crickets were really the winners of spider tank too. They were there underneath uh, doing all the dirty work, weren't they? Get that one out. I don't know what was living underneath that. Probably scurried away. Now I've generated the gap there. What I might do is I'll shuffle along these tubs a bit so we don't have them close together like that. That might make it harder for the spideys to live. Now I know the first gap, there was no spider roonies, so I can be sort of a bit reckless here. Now it's this gap here where things start to get a little bit spiderific. Oh yeah. Okay, that's her nest area. I've sort of ripped apart the cone that she had. You can sort of see the shape of it there. I'm just going to grab the egg sack and then I'm going to deal with the spider. Okay, got the egg sack. I'm just going to mark that egg sack with one dot, being the first one I picked up. Now she's been having a wonderful feast of the black bugs that they so often nab and I know the spider is just under the lip there. I've got a revised tool here, it's whippersnipper filament, whatever you call that stuff there, coiled up like that on the end of a aluminium stick. If it all starts to get pear shaped I've got the Dyson. Now it's one of these things that really needs my full attention, but I'm going to try and video it. I'm just going to drag this along and hopefully the spidey will want to drop down and play with me. <laughs> That's the theory. She's playing a little bit hard to get. Maybe if I push this way. Come on dearie, work with me. <laughs> Sometimes they just drop if they feel like they're under threat. Ooh, I can't see her yet, or can I? Oh, is that her up there? I'm just going to retire that tool and go to one that I know, and it's the monkey tool. And I've used that one before. And wish me luck, and I'm just going to drag it from the back here. And hopefully it'll bring the spider out. And everything else that's up there. Thank goodness for monkeys, eh? Very inventive little critters. Oh, got the spider, I've got it! Monkey Tool wins again. Oh, she's a little bit cranky. So would I be if I had someone with a monkey tool through my home. I tell you what, that is a stunner. That is a mature, uh, obviously female redback spider. It must have wandered here because there was no redback spiders here back in April. That is amazing. Yeah, she's liking that monkey tool a lot. I'm just um, got it down on the box there. I'm just letting her play with her own nest. And now that I've grabbed all this, I, this may sound crazy, but I'm going to go and put it in to one of the spider homes that I've made. I tell you what, she is a stunner. I'll just transfer all of the webby stuff there and the food that she's grabbed into the center. This will be the tricky bit. I'll just transfer her over. Oh no, she's been good, actually. I'll put her into her little webby area there. There we go. Oh no, she's away. She got away. Just had a mission failure there, man. She hit the ground and she bolted, and I'm gonna have to be very quick. I'll just move this aside, and unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do this. I don't know where she went, but she bolted fast. That's what I was using there. That ended very badly, actually. Man, she took off very quickly. I'll just put this on here. I don't know if I'm gonna attempt that again. Just a reminder to me how efficient a flamethrower is. Hmm. Anyway, I'll just clean up the rest of this web here and I'll keep shuffling things along. I think it's clean in between the next two. I'll tell you what, the next wet day we have here, it's going to be like apocalypse now in my backyard for these spiders. Yes, yeah, so that's clean through there, but what I will do is, uh, people like this scraping thing, don't they? Nice and clean, I hope, yep. Something about that they really like, maybe the sound. The next bay is also clear. I'll just... Oh, these tubs are all sun affected and hail affected. They're falling apart in my hand. Yes, that's clear as well, but I will do the monkey tool. Clean as a withal. There's a lot of little fine web around the front of these tubs, is all I could say. Yeah, that's pretty clean. Yeah, there's sort of webby bits around here. And here, I suppose it's all little spidling stuff, isn't it? Now I know the next one presents with a red back and I think it's an egg sack or something going on in there, so I have to be a bit careful. 
Oh, if I can move it. Oh yes, I can see the spiderific stuff happening. Okay, just move some of this green away and we can start to see the spider stuff. I'm just going to come in and very carefully grab the egg sac. There's very, very strong web around it. Okay, I've got it. Oh, sort of got it. Second time lucky. Ooh. And we can just understand that as being number two. I'm just checking to see where the spider is. It's balled up under the lip of the container. Hmm. Okay, I've got my favourite monkey tool here and I'm just going to do that drag like I always do. It's no drag doing the drag. And hopefully it's going to drag the spider out of that little recluse area. I do believe the spider's in amongst the web there on the uh, monkey tool. Yes, there she is. That is another very mature female redback spider. Put it this way, it wasn't there last April, but it's there now. Why is this so? Sort of says to me these spiders go wandering around as adults looking for new homes to play. And I'm sorry little girl, it's going to be good night sister in a chemical way. Oh geez, she hasn't moved much since she's been on the monkey tool. Oh, she's moving a bit now. I think the monkey tool might have done, done her in in a strange way. She won't be coming back from that. I don't think she's in that good a shape since the monkey tool dragged her out of a nest. Put it this way, she didn't try to run anywhere. Mind you, they are the sort of spider that balls up when they're feeling threatened. But I, well, I think she was a bit sick before she got sprayed. There she is free of that webby nest. Uh, she could potentially have been a redback spider, let's say from the very early part of last season. I'm just looking at the size of her. She's a little bit smaller uh, than that other redback that I caught that got away from me. Yeah, it's very interesting. And she probably had another egg sack getting ready in there. I'll just uh, clean up this area with the monkey tool over the efficiency of a flamethrower. I'll tell you what, I'm really... <laughs> I really know why I use it when I just see how clunky it is getting the spiders in this fashion. Well, let me just put this in a nice position. I'm sure a redback will set up in that. I certainly know there's spiders in here. I'm pretty sure it's a baby redback that was inside that one there. Okay, well, I've set these tubs out with a nice little gap in between there. See that? I can see down there a little bit clearer. Hopefully make it harder for the spiders to set up. But at the next drop of rain, I tell you what, I'm going to hit this with the biggest flamethrower you've ever seen. To finish the video off, I think it might be very prudent to take a look inside these redback spider egg sacs and that'll tell me how long they've been laid up. Actually, just as I was cleaning up, I noticed some very suspicious web there. These are the tubs under the lemon tree. Now, we only just straightened these up during winter time. They used to be on a bit of an angle. It was all clean in winter time, but wait till we look up there. Well, that's a redback spider's egg sac. I dare say that's the spider there as well. Fantastic. This gets a little bit depressing, I can tell you. It's just relentless the way these spiders keep coming back. Um, there's also a very suspicious web going on there. It's actually clean up between all the other tubs. Let me just separate these as usual. This is the troublesome one and it's a mature spider, which worries me. Just gonna come in very carefully and grab that egg sac. Thank goodness none of these have hatched yet. Man, that web is strong. You don't realize how much strength you need to pull it out. Just gently put the egg sac in there. Wouldn't want to harm it. And now for my special, special monkey tool. It's actually been a fantastic thing for nabbing spiders out of the lips of these tubs. And I know it's on this side. And if I just do a nice drag through like that, hopefully it'll drag the spider out. Yes, the spider is there. Oh, I'm sorry, little girl. Good night, sister. Dusted. That's the third mature female that I've nabbed uh, between the tubs. Very, very worrying, and I'll just free her out of this web here very carefully, of course. Yeah. Oh, man, she is massive. Uh, she would have been just about ready to do another egg sac by the size of her there. Yes, that Coles multi spray, I tell you what, I'm very impressed with it. It's nice and inexpensive, and it's pretty good at nabbing these dangerous redback spiders. As for what was going on here, at the front of the tub here, I'm not quite sure. There's a lot of web there. Hmm, I'm not really seeing a spider popping out of me. Might have been an old nest or something. Yeah, you know, you get a flamethrower and it just cleans things up everywhere. Boy, oh boy, do I miss that method. I'm a bit curious about up this section here in case there's a spider crawled up along there. No. Hmm. 
that bit there may have been that spider we just pulled out. It may have been her initial nest and she's gone and reclused into a better area up there. Okay, now we will take a look at the egg sacs. Okay, I've got my scalpel there. I've got my surgical gloves on. Let's inspect these egg sacs. This egg sac, this is the one the spider got away. I think I learned a lesson there not to play that game and try and relocate them. These egg sacs, um, they're very, very strong. Uh, you need a really sharp scalpel to get into them. And I'm hoping I've got to these before they've hatched. Mind you, we are sort of early in the spider season. So we'll open this up and we'll see if anything comes out. If nothing comes out, I'm in trouble. Phew, I got to this one in time. It looks like it's just going to be, yes, um, just basically eggs. Okay, yeah, normally when they've got spiderlings and things like that, it'd be a little bit later on in the year, and the egg sac would be a darker colour. Phew, well that first one, I got to that one at the right sort of time. Well, this is the second one, and this is the one that I was able to nab the spider. And we'll compare that spider to the third one, which is going to be quite interesting. It's always hard looking down through a camera and trying to maneuver your hands. I don't know how surgeons do their work. That's why they pay a lot of money, I'm, and I'm not a surgeon, isn't it? Okay, I'm hoping I've got to this one before it attached, but I'm very curious to see how developed the egg sac is. It looks very similar to that first one. I'm just seeing the eggs, I'm not really seeing a formation of any hatched eggs there, of spiderlings legs or anything else. So phew, that's another one that I got to in the nick of time. Now, obviously this is the third one, this is a full size red back, I tell you this is quite a large spider, it may have been in its last year of life. I mean, who knows where that's come from? That's what's a bit spooky because there were no redbacks in that zone before because we, we tidied it all up. It was just a couple of months back. I opened this one up. I'd love to get the footage of how these spiders get around. I can only assume it's at night time. They mooch around. I'll tell you what, that one that got away on me, when it worked out it had to, you know, go for its life, it went fast. Okay, this third egg sac. It looks like a, very similar to the other two. This one's got a lot of, um, somehow got insecticide all over it. Yeah, it's all soggy, you can see that. It looks like it's just another caviar style egg sac in a sense, just little eggs. There's no spidlings formed yet. Uh, luckily I've got to that one in nick of time as well. Okay, I've got number two spider and number three spider side by side. Don't get distracted looking at the back end piece there. Uh, this number three spider would be basically about to do another egg sac, they bloat up like that. Look at the main part of the body where the legs attach, look at the size of the legs and you can also see the legs working like that when I do that. This is a much bigger spider, this could have been a spider in its third year. Uh, this one here may have been a spider let's say from last summer possibly. I don't think this one would be, yeah I reckon it's about a, you know, a good year old, it came about early in last spider season. I think about how fast Bindi grew. And I'm sort of comparing what Bindi may have got up to. Bindi might have got up, got up to this size here. This one here is, well, as big as you're going to see. And it's a monster. And look at the beautiful red back on that one. Just spectacular, really. And also they've got the red markings underneath, if I just spin it around like that. And that's what this is what you'll see on a Black Widow spider as well. It's at figure eight there. Uh, exactly the same as what you see on a Black Widow spider that you find in the USA. Always remember the scary spider maths. I mean, each of these spiders had already laid up one egg sac. Uh, they could have potentially got up four egg sacs in the spider season. They can easily produce, let's say, a thousand little spiderlings of their own kind within a spider season. And uh, let's say if you had a couple of these girls work in the backyard, well, it's multiple thousands of little spiderlings that you're going to have to deal with. And that's why these spiders breed up in massive numbers in your backyard. My well, crikeys, I hope you learned something about them spider eggs, plus the redback spiders with their hydraulic legs. I'll tell you one thing I've learned is I miss my flamethrower method. It's a nice, safe, effective way of nabbing these spiders. But I'll tell you what I do like, and that is my spider lures slash traps seem to be attracting the spiders in a nice way. That's going to be a very, very convenient way to keep check of what's going on in redback spider land. And here's something a little bit crazy and different for the end. It looks like the ants love McDonald's apple pies. 
or as we used to call them when we were younger, McDonald's Choco Pies.